Medieval, a game for PlayStation 1 I used to play a lot when I was a kid as well. Like I said um, in my previous video, it's actually, uh, it was actually also a big part of my childhood. Absolutely love this game, it's such a masterpiece, I swear, and it's a very underrated game, so I'm really glad that it's also getting a remaster, and that's also why we're gonna play this too, as well, just like Spyro, it's a sort of a road to the remaster sort of thing. In a time long ago, there lived in the kingdom of Galomir a sorcerer named Zarok. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. So he raised an army of demons and set out to take the realm for his own. The king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia into battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude, how demons fell before him like wheat before the scythe, and how at last, though mortally wounded, he destroyed the sorcerer utterly. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galloway, and a time of peace began, which was to last for a hundred years. And then, the sorcerer returned.
So here I want to show you something. If you don't, yeah, there we go. If you don't do anything for a while, it just does this little animation. And when I was a kid, I was super scared of it because we thought that if you reached the water and this happened, that you would, lo you would lose all your progress. Like it would unsave, delete all of your progress basically. And I don't, I'm not sure why we thought this. I believe it's because probably somehow it got unsaved and I don't know, close to some time that this animation happened or something, I don't know. And we thought that it unsaved the game. I'm not sure. But it was just a peculiar, interesting thing. I love this. So that, that's Sir, Dan, Sir Daniel Fortescue, that's us. And it's also kind of surprising how fast he died in the war. It has risen again, Sir Daniel Fortescue. See? The hero of Galomir who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the savior of the day. But we knows better. <laughs> Let it alone. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Zarok and live up to the legend. We hope it does well. And so our legend begins. Man, this is cool. I have such great memories of this game. What was this? Can I open this somehow? Oh, um. Now this is probably, so you get different weapons throughout the game, right? And eventually you'll get a hammer that can destroy like things, obviously. And I'm pretty sure that once you get the hammer, you can come back here. Yeah, I see a little elf push in that. And you can you can break that wall. Um, I have really good memories of this game. Really, really good memories. Because I used to play this a lot, not only alone, but with my parents, but also with my cousin. Oh, fuck, I forgot to change. Um, and and so we used to we used to go like on holidays to my to our grandparents' house. They have this huge ass backyard. And so what we would do basically is uh, out of cardboard, we would just build all kinds of armor and shields and swords. And we we built all of the shields from Medieval One, as well as some of the swords. I remember specifically the magic sword, which we're gonna get very late into the game and all the shields of the copper i'm not gonna spoil the, i did the weapons actually or shields or anything you guys are gonna check it out um in case you haven't played this of course but um it was it, there were really good times it was it was it was awesome i don't know um and we would also like craft bows out of sticks um and we would just have lots and lots of fun. Yeah, so basically you kill these zombies. Um, they, they actually look really funny. Like, if you look at their face, I'm gonna try to show you. Because their face is like super tiny. Let's see if I can bring them here. No, come here. And then somehow... Uh, I can't. I can't show you. But eventually, I will be able to show you. It's really funny. So the the shield you can obviously um, block with it. You just press. Uh, you just press triangle, and it will it will deteriorate with time. So 
You see that 150 under the shield on the top left corner? If you if you block damage, the, then it will eventually it will, it will start like losing. Oh, I'll show you. Actually. Start shooting. Yeah, see. So it's a one 110 now. Um, so that's the thing to look out for as well. I don't usually block a lot of damage. I don't think it's extremely necessary. The later parts of the game, obviously here, it's not really. Uh, I think. This is also how you get life, uh, how you get your HP back. There's these little things, and uh, if you stay here for too long, they have a limit, and they will just disappear. If it overheals you, I, it will fill up those little pots that you see above the HP bar and stat. And with time, throughout the game, you're gonna get new pots. Uh, I don't remember how. Uh, yet. Basically, on the top right corner, if you ah shit, uh, if you notice on the top right corner, there's like a little chalice with a a um a percentage. When you get when that gets to 100, you can get that chalice that is that is all floating over there. And what that basically does is every time every time you end a level, you go into a hall of heroes. And if you got the um, chalice for the level you are in then you will be able to speak to one of the statues, it's always a different statue, and they will give you stuff. It can be weapons, it can be money, whatever really. See, the chalice cannot be collected because it's 100 percent and you basically get a um, percentage by killing monsters and whatnot. Because it's kind of like, oh, harvesting souls sort of thing. There's also this blue gargoth heads, whatever thing is, uh, which sell you things. So here I can buy more, app, more ammo for the throwing axe if I want, but I'd rather just save up the money because I don't really use the throwing daggers anyway that much. Um, so there's that. So now we're gonna go back because um, we now we can get the chalice, and I'm losing way too much HP. I do not like that. Come on. Alright, so uh, there's a secret place of sorts here, if you jump over to this side and then you have to walk so you don't fall. I used to be very impatient as a kid so I would just run here and I would fall all the time but then I would just give up because I couldn't get this. Okay, so now we turn this again. Let me get a chalice. The Hall of Heroes awaits. Correct. There's also a level uh, later in the game where you're gonna come out of this gate. So on the other side is a whole other portion of the level. It's really cool uh, how they included a bunch of um, uh, backtracking in this game. I really like it when they when games do that. Especially like later in the game, you get like items or something that allows you to. Okay, you can see the the faces here. Do it. Um, I really like when there's like items you get and stuff that then allow you to get access new areas in the game later on that were like the first levels. And all that. I just find that fascinating for some reason. I also like how they nailed water. Uh, the water in this game is really, it looks really like eerie, you know. I, I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but I just really like how it looks. It has a very creepy feeling to it, and it's also, you can't step on water, I mean, you can't step on water if it's like this, you just can't, like, you see there, it's deeper on that side, so if you fall in there, you basically drown to death. And what happens is, if you have elf pots above your HP bar, then it, there's gonna be a, um, and if you die, basically you kind of revive using the full pot, it just kind of floats you up. softly. Zarek awaits beyond these gates. The master meets with the demon from the mausoleum, hatching plots of purest evil. Oh my god. Forgotten nobodies would be wise to make themselves scarce. Excuse me. The um, demon of the mausoleum, if that's what I'm thinking. And Jesus fucking Christ. That was... It's one of the scariest things I've ever seen in a child. Like, I was legit Welcome afraid of that thing. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity 
feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. If they think you are worthy enough, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. That's right. If you're worthy enough, that, that, that he's talking about the challenge. So if you kill enough uh, monsters, then you get the chalice and you get to come here. So there's several stages as you can see. There's the chalice over there, which um, I think later in the game you can get this chalice too. I'm not completely sure, but yeah, basically. Oh my god! If you guys want to read this, by the way, I'll just put it up for you. Okay, it's just telling you how to do the thing. I thought it was story because some of those are just basically lore. Captain Fortescue, it's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? <laughs> How I wish I could fight at your side again, sir. But hold, you could take my crossbow. It's got rapid fire and you can ricochet the darts off walls to shoot around corners. I used it at the Battle of Galamir. After you were slain, I shot Zarek's champion, Lord Kardok. A clean kill through the eye at some thousand yards. Of course they will accept. Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, because he was shot in the eye. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, so here's the crossbow. This was one of my favorite items, uh, favorite weapons, I mean. I just love it. Look at it. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, basically you look for the statue that's glowing green and you go talk to it. Later on this door will also open and I don't remember what it has. And those, sh and those stairs will also uh, turn solid so you can actually go upstairs. Um... So now we go back here, we will teleport us back, and I think we're gonna stop. We're gonna end it here. Yes, I want to leave it. This game is great. It's absolutely great. It's so fun. Man. And the way they handled the world map is pretty cool as well. Hell yeah, I wanna say progress. But yeah, on that note, we're gonna end it here. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you played it back then, then hopefully it's feeling nostalgic to you, just as it is to me. Um, and we're gonna play through all of the Spyro, uh, through all of the Medieval One, and then we're gonna eventually play Medieval Two as well. Uh, I'm actually not sure how they're gonna handle the remaster. This is for Crash and Spyro they're doing for the trilogy. I wonder if they're doing for both games, for both Medieval games as well. Uh, that would be cool. I would like to see that, because the second game was pretty fun as well. Uh, though the best memories I have are from the first one, definitely. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, I wish you all a good day, I'll see you next time, bye bye.